All right. What is up, guys? That's your boy, no name. Just going to do a quick, or quick, er, update on the character from the start of season one of Diablo 4. Um, you see, I'm level 71. Uh, the first thing that I want to cover as an update here is actually going to be the most disappointing part of the news, honestly. Um, currently playing Ice Shards again. I hate it here. There's a plan uh, to go back to Frozen Orb, but I tried Frozen Orb uh, from level one from basically level one all the way to about level 30 or so when i just decided that frozen orb wasn't doing enough like i i should have decided a lot sooner but i was just hard coping because i really like the skill or i like the idea of the skill i have some issues with d force frozen orb and i can kind of show you very quickly once i find like a non-town area to walk to um okay i'm gonna keep talking while i do so and i will show you my issues i have like a couple very specific issues with frozen orb uh, but it wasn't doing enough damage, but I know how to scale it. Like, I think at this, at my current character point, I tested it a little bit yesterday. And, like, Frozen Orb is functional now. It's just, um, Ice Shards is still much better. And I figure I'll wait to switch to Frozen Orb until I can do the thing that I want to do with it, right? Like, until I can make the full build, like, all together. I don't really want to touch Frozen Orb. Oh, it's like, let me kill these guys so they get out of my way. Okay. So, so Frozen Orb, let me just talk about, like, issues I have with the skill first and foremost, right? Uh, the upgrades don't actually matter for Frozen Orb. So, here's the issue with Frozen Orb. Ready? So, that's Frozen Orb. Really cool and all. Except for the part where the enchant, or the, the thing where it's like, oh, yeah, it shoots off projectiles. So, those projectiles do piss damage. Even, like, with gear, the projectiles do, like, no actual damage. I don't have the ancient, the aspect on at the moment, but the, the primary asset for Frozen Orb makes it explode two more times, like right here. It'd be like, boo, boo, boo. That's where all the damage is. The actual projectile flight, terrible. Does almost no damage. It's just used to proc effects. You know, crits and stuff like that. Lucky hit, all that good stuff. Apply chill. You get a lot of chill, actually, from the projectile being thrown. Um, But the you know, total of 36% damage really translates to like three percent damage per hit or something like that it's terrible terribly useless um but the damage at the explosion part is pretty solid when it all when it all like lands together so that was the i that was like what i what i want to play around but we'll talk i'll talk about so the plan for this by the way it was like while we're back on ice shards it's just that ice shards does significantly more damage um even just level one ice shards this whole thing it's just that it's a beam they do much more focused damage same similar effect of applying vulnerable now, but it has frozen bonuses, which makes my clear stronger. Ice shards and Chen is great, and my gear is getting pretty has gotten pretty good at this point. You know, I have plus four frost of a boots that I'm gonna try to roll for plus four teleport. I think at the long term, I might wait till they get another evade charge. Um, but I have plus four here. I have plus three on my neck. Uh, this is crazy gear for level seventy one, by the way. Um, but like you know, I have stats that I actually care about on the character here. You can kind of see as I just like mouse over the gear. Um, the progression has been moving very smoothly in terms of like when I progressed and whatnot. Look at this focus, by the way. This is the resource focus. If I had C if I had CDR over damage over damage against damage reduction from burning, this would be insane. Um, but so you'll notice that the gear is pretty solid across almost entirely across the board. I have a remnant already as well. This is something that's majorly different from last season or preseason. Preseason, I was without a remnant until level 99. It's not a really good idea of what this character feels like without a remnant. And I can tell you, pre remnant feels great, post remnant feels incredible. Um, the other big things that are updating this character, and another part of the reason why I'm not so gung ho to jump off of ice shards as early as I would have probably been in previous instances. Uh, are the frozen hearts primarily this one you can't see the name of it but if you read the effect critical strike raffle heart critical strikes and all subsequent damage dealt within 2.1 seconds is absorbed by your target then the absorbed damage erupt, erupts onto surrounding enemies store damage is increased by 13 percent per second so this is case this is the raffle heart of the barber and now i did learn recently that it is messing it does mess with lucky hit a little bit um, it's not as noticeable because I do hit so many times and I think there's some interesting tick rate stuff going on. Um, but I, I do, do actively lose triggers of stuff like avalanche, some, I think, which is a little unfortunate, but in exchange, 
you get better single target and also more importantly you get clear from it uh let me let me see if i can find a pack to demonstrate this on very quickly here i'll demonstrate on like some enemies and then i'm going to run a dungeon as i continue talking so you can see the character like look at that so those black explosions that's the barber um this solves one of my other issues with ice shards from last season which is that it had no clear and you had to run fireball enchantment but then you eventually have to take off fireball enchantment in order to get real clear um or to get real damage you know you needed firebolt for damage scaling or you needed like in my case right now i'm running teleport for better clear speed teleport enchantment because i have rhyme it that's why another reason i want the extra space bars right um but with the barber you just have cl you have pops outside of uh, fireball enchantment and shatter which just overall makes your farming faster makes it allows me to run avalanche for longer which feels really good so here's just a quick little showcase of what the character's feeling like uh you know i keep talking about some things that i've tested here because you know you'll also notice on the skill bar um in the video i made right before like right before this or the post right before the season started i talked about how i'd probably be running inferno and blizzard and I was running Inferno and Blizzard. I am now running Flame Armor, and it is partially a mixture of I liked to not die. Um, I was I switched over to Inferno before, or switched off of Inferno before getting Rhyme, by the way. I just determined that I preferred not dying. Um, see, see, like, shit like that happens, and you just really need to not die. Um, preferring to not die over having the pull utility was worth it at that at that point, especially for how under leveled I was in the content. Like right now, I could probably just run pull and be fine, except I don't need to. But you know, classic guy shards gameplay. Except now the damage is a little bit delayed because of the barber, but everything pops that much faster. It also does have four stacks of the tall Rasha heart. This is a large heart. Um, if you play a Sork and you are not running a tall Rasha heart, you should do that immediately um it is so much borderline unconditional damage uh it's something i've learned is that it does truly take in all damage types you could deal so for example the barber's damage is actually physical this is the only way that a sort can get access to physical damage as far as i know and then like there's the a fix i don't have it on this nightmare dungeon but the the fix that makes you like leave the poison puddle when you dash uh that actually gives you poison damage which triggers a fifth stack of the tall rasha um, and the Tal Rasha in this game is way more, like, if you play D3 Wizard and you're familiar with the Tal Rasha set there, it's actually way easier to upkeep because you don't need to alternate elements as much. It's not use each element once per eight seconds to maintain the bonus. It's, um, just use an element, literally an element, doesn't even care if you alternate or not, and do damage with it. And so as long as I've done damage with every element at least once, then I can just spam ice shards or whatever skill I feel like using and uh maintain uptime it's just pretty pretty nutty honestly i feel like it's a little bit over tuned don't mind all the sacred items on the ground i don't really feel like doing those later because i'm gonna have to do a lot of inventory cleaning later today my stash is like almost full this is a constant problem um did you guys see that tweet by the way about the issues with adding stash space uh and how uh everybody loads their entire stash on everybody's fucking instance when they load in absolute clownery right just you know kind of thinking out loud about that because it's kind of annoying that that's the that it's such a weirdly it's a weird reason for that to be a constant problem so you'll see here um the reason i run blizzard it's not noticeable right now because i'm in lower content slash i'm oh, a little bit slower than i would like to be to be honest but basically if i don't have a charge of frost nova up which is pretty rare at this point like 17 second cooldown two charges um two charges by the way because of frost blitz enchant uh aspect highly recommend look at that pull them all together shatter them oh this one's not dead shatter them look at that yeah um if you're not running frost blitz and you are reliant on ice shards for any reason especially as a uh like i think like arc lash could probably benefit from running frost blitz i definitely think all ice shards characters should run it so what i'm supposed to do is i drop blizzard when i'm like dpsing a single target it gives me mana cost reduction. That's a big thing. It also gives me stacking up for CC or for, for like stagger counts, which is important just in case uh, I need to, you know, stagger the target. Also, though, is that if I want to pack, like, let me demonstrate here actually why I run Blizzard. Let me, can I get a pack of reasonable size, please? This doesn't like feel like it's a good, okay. Uh, not that there's, okay, here we go. Okay, yeah. So here, I just drop this and then teleport in. 
I didn't have any frost never charges, they will just freeze from this. They actually just died to a crit proc from the barber. That's hilarious. Um, but usually they freeze to two blizzards pretty easily. And so I use that on like say like a cursed shrine for example. Um, as a way to keep things safe. But like look at how fast I'm. And that, now these are only four levels above me, but when my gear was worse and I was pushing up ten levels above while doing my renown yesterday, it was also just as clean, killing all the boss, killing everything. Um, I had much bigger problems with, like living than I did not dying. Not living, by the way. Speak reminds me. So, but I'll go back over the gear like in more detail after I finish this dungeon. But the other major heart that I'm using, so Taraja Barber, right? I mentioned both of those. So the third one is actually, you see that red that explosion just came off my body? Like, let me get hit real quick so I can show you again. Hit me. Hit me. Uh, wait. Yeah, that explosion right there. That is from Aspect of Retali. I believe it's called Heart of Retaliation. Devious Heart of Retaliation, I believe is the name of it. Brutal Heart of Retaliation. Yeah, there we go. Um, and that is a also a very powerful effect. I have to get one more thing. Also a very powerful effect for not take for you know one to proc her fire damage, right? Um, if you were looking for a way to proc fire damage for your uh, what the hell? This is an event. Where's the oh it's down here. Oh my god, I hate this map. Anyways, if you were looking for a proc for fire damage for your barber or for your Tarasha without actually running a fire skill at all. Like I, I use flame shield to trigger it sometimes, or I'll use like the but the other major proc I have right now is literally just um getting hit. Um before this point, by the way, like before I before I had the arrivement, I was just running fireball enchantment. That was my trigger. You know, you proc fireball on killing things, it does damage once. I just speed for the rest of the instance. Especially with a high duration Tarasha. You can just pretty much never drop the buff that you go from back to pack, unless you're like me and run dungeon run dungeons without knowing where you're supposed to be going. Um, I haven't run very much Faceless Shrine. I think I did this once for Renown so far, and that's it. So, generally though, the gameplay has been extremely smooth. The game, the, the leveling has been very nice, but the plan is to go back to Frozen Orb. We're going to go to Frozen Orb. Okay, so you see here, I didn't drop my Blizzard, so drop Blizzard. It doesn't matter if it's on the boss, by the way. We just want the mana cost reduction. You see the barber procs, they get nasty. Look at how big that proc that that chunk was. Um, it's really satisfying, honestly, as a sword to finally see big chunks of damage. Like it's not as shreddy because you know it delays our damage, but it feels it still feels great. This is a pretty good amulet. Plus two glass cannon, MS, close DR close. Uh I can't really use it though, because I need defensive and CDR. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I'll sell it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, so that's the dungeon. You can tell I haven't like even leveled glyphs or anything. Like We're missing a lot of character power. I've only been doing... Uh, I did Nightmare Dungeons in T3 to get to, to get to 60, 61-ish so that I could get to T4. And then in T4, all I've actually done so far is Helltides and, Re and Renown. Um, I'm 2k Renown in all regions just so I can get my Paragon points. Like I just finished that before, my, before, the, before this. Right? So... As you see here, um, 2k, 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 2k. So it feels pretty good. Um, my Paragon board is very weird. So let's talk a little bit about the character very quickly, just so you can see what we're working with, now that you see what it does. Because I don't think it's that impressive, outside of the fact that our Sharks is still really, feels really good. And I think that Sork does benefit a good chunk from the changes being focused on doing damage as opposed to living damage, because we already couldn't live damage anyways. Um, it's a lot how I used to think about Ranger in PoE before the update to like, before the update to Evasion and the creation of Suppression, which was honestly more damage is better just because you weren't going to live anyways. But so, stuff in here of note, right? And I'll just talk a little bit about each piece, right? Weapons or focus item power first. On your main hand, you want like main stat, Vuln, crit dam, core dam, damage to burning, damage, to, preferably damage to like, damage to burning is actually useless to me because I'm not burning anything right now. But I don't feel like rolling to try to get, like, oh, I don't know. Oh, man, I'm going to get, like, 17% damage against CC'd. Would it be a DPS increase? Yes. Do I care? No. You, you can see my damage. I don't need it. Um, I'll focus on that later because I think I'm going to have to roll down for crit damage to perfect this weapon because it is almost perfect, right? 
Int's definitely the best slot there, even after the nerf. Volan's still the best slot. Quarry skill is definitely the best of the percent damage for this, and so I've just left needing crit damage on this piece. You look over here at the offhand. The only thing wrong with this offhand, literally the only thing I don't like about the offhand is I don't have CDR. Everything else I think is perfect. Then my rings. This is a really trash ring. Life crit damage CC. It's such an easier ring, but I haven't been able to find blue rings to replace it with. And I'm not replacing this heart. This is a brutal heart of retaliation I was talking about earlier. Uh, 10 to 20% of the incoming damage is suppressed, and, which actually means you just don't take the damage. And then when you use a defensive substitute or a cog skill, which if you're a Sork, you run three to four defensive skills. And so this allows you to just very quickly explode for large amounts of fire damage. I don't know if this is actually supposed to do real, real damage. I have yet to see this to actually kill anything, but it does damage. Uh, the big thing is that it's a huge source of DR for classes that don't have it. I also need to get a better one because I only get 194 armor from this. This is worse than the skull versus like, these are both almost skull levels, but I need to get better stuff because I got the barber a while ago. Um, this is the barber, and then this is Tarasha. Vicious Heart of Tarasha, for each unique element you deal damage with, you deal 7 to 12%. I have a pretty high roll there, and then increase damage for 10, 4 to 10 seconds. I have a max roll on that. It's worth noting, by the way, though, these rolls on, on your hearts, if you didn't know, are dependent on the re the level of your heart. And I think the levels that you get depend on enemies that you get, like the level of the enemy you get it from. So like you can see in here, these are a bunch of like, like look at that, level one Varshan's heart. Do I have a, I don't have a level four to compare it to, do I? Um, I recently did a heart clean out, so I don't have any like low level hearts to look at. Oh, but I can show you, here we go. So here's a two. And this is a really good roll, right? 12, nine is actually really good. Like perfect roll for this, right? Um, I, now, will be more damage for my current one, but it's actually less duration than my current Tarasha because I have 10 seconds. Um, and that came from the, um, this Tarasha, the level four Tarasha. Pretty good stuff indeed here. This ring is also really good. Crit, 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 damn, Voln. I'm sad that the Voln rolled so low, the Voln and crit, damn, rolled so low on the reroll, but it, and the max mana. Max mana is a stat that I'm actually interested in, partially because I want to be able to maintain the gear when I move over to Frozen Orb, and also because um, it lets me maintain edge masters easier and uh, what's supposed to be elementalist. But I haven't switched over to Elementals. Like I said, like I'm missing a lot of power. I'm not using Elementals at the moment. I'm using Edge Masters because I don't have my mana sustain where I want it to be at yet. I don't have mana cost reduction on my amulet. I don't have mana. I, like I actually have a really good offhand, but I think I want one more way to handle my mana. But I think I want a resource gen roll on one of my two rings before I switch over to Elementalist. Um, this helmet is actually about as good as it gets outside of the roll ranges. Um, instead of will, willpower is what I use to activate some nodes. Instead of willpower here, I'd probably want max mana. You could also do, um, int. Those are like your two other options here. Rhymant, best in slot. I need to upgrade this still, actually. Wow, I'm just leaving free damage on the table. Yeah, uh, Rhymant, best in slot for sure. Outside of Rhymant, just get a good DR chest. Um, I was using on my chest aspect of the protector until I got this. Had I got to like 75, 80 without getting a rhyme, the chest would have then moved to aspect of disobedience. Now you might be thinking aspect of disobedience at that point, aren't you supposed to run that earlier on? Uh, maybe, but I've been doing some testing and I have found ever living aspect to be really good for Aish for this character. You just have so much access to CC and vulnerable that I felt like the flat percent DR was just worth more to me because we don't actually have all that much armor at this stage in the game and we were pushing upwards. When you're pushing into enemies that are above you, your armor gets weaker, right? It, set, it specifies inc reduces damage taken from enemies of an equal level. But I've been playing at 8 to 15 level deficits and so armor is not as important as just raw mitigation. So that's why I've been going with Ever Living this entire time. Gloves are control. Control's best in slot. I might even actually put it in my neck now that I have like Ryman to go with it. Because then I have like pretty much perma uptime on control whenever I'm killing something. Uh there is my boots. I use I use exploiters on my boots almost always. You could use the MS on teleport if you want to go faster. You can use uh, Fortune for a lucky hit. I'm just a huge fan of Exploiter. That's just a personal pr preference, but the big thing is on these boots, mana cost reduction, ranks of Frost Nova, movement speed. Those are the big three stats. I 
Feely, your fourth stat is mo is ranks of teleport. That's like Turbo Abyss. Um, and then you want the inputs for max evade charges because it'll scale better with your Rhyme. It just adds one more, it adds additional mini teleports. Like I got really unlucky because you can't even actually get two on this. It's a one to two roll that then goes up 50%. So it's either one or it's three and I got one. This is super unlucky. If these were three, I would actually just donkey roll all of my gold into into that int that I currently have rolled on there until I hit teleport. Um, because this would be literal bis, I would have a rank eight teleport, theoretically, uh, at that point, which also ranks on this teleport will affect the cooldown on the enchantment teleport alongside CDR. So you actually do get a pretty meaningful, like if I take off the, you'll notice if I take off the, um, it's cooldown has gone up tremendously. That's not just five percent CDR. That's the levels on the on the teleport going away. So, all in all, there good things going on. You know, I said the neck is nuts. Horror Frost is definitely the best passive to get on your neck now. By the way, um, at least in terms of like bursting damage. Given the way that my bossing is currently going, I think I'd actually probably rather have had Icy Touch. It's less cap damage, right? Because this is this is eighteen percent against chill without the extra points in it. And this is only 12% or 18% is frozen. And this is only 12 against vulnerable. But right now I'm like, you know, for example, the, the butcher is never going to get staggered or like the bosses and dungeons are dying quick enough where I'm not staggering them. And so icy touch is probably a little bit better at this point, but who cares? Uh, horror frost clears better is what it is. Um, other little niche things in my tree, just to show it off here a little bit. So blizzard, we use the wizards one, like I said, for the mana skill, mana cost reduction. We have cold front. This is three flex points that I actually just really like because it makes staggering bosses faster and it lets my blizzard like really get active when working against regular enemies. These nodes are non-negotiable when you're playing uh, frozen orb, by the way, it just makes the frozen orb chill. Like it freezes so easily with frozen orb. Lucky hit, you know, standard stuff here, more standard stuff up here. Uh, that we only take enhanced. These two are both really bad. We just need the ability to have the mana regen. You could take the mana cost reduction on flame shield, but I think the panic heal is just so much better. Um, rank 12 ice noble, we frost noble, we love that. Ideally, we get a shako and make that 16, but you know, that's cope, that's massive cope. We're, we're 14 levels too low, anyways. Um, the spender of choice here does not matter, by the way. You do not use this. I just have them in firebolt because if I were to enchant a, a basic, it is going to be firebolt. Whenever I get to like 95 plus and I start really needing to dial in on my burning scaling, but I haven't needed to yet. So I haven't actually enchanted this. I should take the point out of fireball. That's a useless point. Give me my barrier points. Yep. Okay, cool. Or chill points. Cool. That's now four points. That's really flexible that you can do a lot of things with. Um, a personal recommendation for things you could do with those four points. If you don't like them there, put them in teleport. <laughs> uh, like realistic, I should probably take that point back and put it in teleport just for CD purposes. You could also go one point in Devastation, three points in Elemental Dominance for more damage. Uh, but I have found the utility of the additional chill to be really good with Blizzard, so I'd say give it a shot. Ice Shards, main skill. All right, so that's the tree. Paragon so far, um, do, trying a new approach. I had a mix-max min -max Paragon tree, right? I showed it in the video uh, for talking about the concept. This is not my min -max tree at all. Um, in fact, I changed a board out actually, cause I'm not playing, since I'm not playing frozen orb right now, the idea of using, I believe the board was, um, ice fall. It's pretty worthless to me because I can't apply chill quickly when I'm just spamming ice shards and frost, uh, frost to it. Only when I blizzard do I get it. So I said, I'll just go with, I believe this is enchantment master, enchantment master because it gives lots of damage here. This is another good damage wheel with some life on it. And then also damage here and a, and a dex glyph. Note, can't activate this yet because it's not 15. That's like why I've, this also will be part of how I'm choosing my boards right now. So my glyphs aren't not 15. So I'm not too worried about what, what my glyphs actually get out of it so much as I'm worried about the actual nodes I get to take. Except on the starter board, which I put exploit in for the free damage. Over here, on the other hand, this is Frigid Fate. This is always going to be my third board in every sort, but I think from, to, from Dawn, from Dust till dawn, full damage, full damage, full DR, full DR. Like it's just a really good board. Um, other things in here that I wanted to take, by the way, is Friendship Fate's actually not a terrible 
like a legendary node it's just a bit far the effect is good it's just actually too far from where you want to path um i have a whole thing about this maybe i'll make a video to talk about like some of my issues with the way circuit is designed just ahead of the fact that we know from the campfire chat recently that they are going to rework this class I'm currently down here ahead to get some stunning nodes, which I probably would have considered. I would have considered taking this board soon, anyways, without the rhyme. But with the rhyme, this board gets really high value as damage, stunning gives me mana sustain, and damage, and a glyph that's actually very good for decks. Yet again, if you're wondering what glyphs I have in so far, exploit activated, an unactivated destruction just for random crit damage, and a unactivated reinforce because it gives me a little bit more crit, a little bit more full damage. Um, and then so from here we're just gonna level out. Eventually we're gonna transition to the real board. And also hopefully transition to the frozen orb. All right, now I've kept you waiting long enough. I am so sorry. <laughs> I am. I'm so sorry. I like I had all, I didn't realize I had a whole lot to talk about the character. Just wanted to make sure everybody knew what we were working with. Now let's talk about. But what about frozen orb? Because I want to play frozen orb. So what I'm looking for is caged heart of the Omni Power. I do not have one of these yet. Um, I talked about it in the video previously about how the case shot of the omni power opens up some possibility for like a star packed esque play style um which if you know me from my past it, if you've like ever played d3 with me i love or people who play d3 with me rather know that i love star packed so the potential of this coming back in a different form was really exciting for me the only thing is i don't have it yet I haven't sat down and farmed out the, the, um, the things you can see on the page here. Here's what the Omni Power does. Um, but I haven't farmed it out yet. Just because I've been trying to, I was focused on getting my right now first. And now I'm going to go focus on getting my levels up. Because I'm going to still need to get more gear and whatnot to support this playstyle. I need more mana gear. I need more mana sustain. Um, but I did see a video of like what this will look like with Frozen Orb. And I have to say, I'm a little concerned because it causes them to fan out instead of it being a barrage. I was really hoping that this would be a barrage of frozen orbs. Like, pew, 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 I think that would have been really strong, but instead it's like this. So I'm not sure what skill I can actually use that with. I'm going to test and see if it works with like Meteor. I couldn't find any footage about if it worked with Meteor or not or anything like that. So we'll see. That's just the general idea. I want to play around Omni Power. It's like the big thing I want to do before I call it quits on this season because I don't think I'll be doing more than, more than just the sort to 100 again. Um, I just don't find the other interesting and I had a concept I wanted to try here. Um, okay, that's everything for this like quick update. Like uh, the, the TLDR is please buff Frozen Orb. Make the projectiles actually do something. It's such a waste of a part of the skill. Whatever, I, I don't know, painful ass skill to use. Eye shards is just like literally 30 times better. Sork needs a rebalance. Hopefully that hopefully like that comes soon. I have a feeling that's gonna come up when the POE league is here. And um, well, we're gonna be covering POE when that happens. So uh is what it is. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm sorry this took so long, just a lot going on here. Um, have a great one and uh, you know, well, if you like the content, you know, leave a like, it helps, comment if you're feeling frisky. If you sub, I'll give you a kiss. Um, and then, you know, check me out. Check me out live. I go live. The link's in the description below. Like, check me out where I'm at. Right? I'll be on Twitch. Um, you, you know where to go. That's the whole deal there. Just down in the description. Check it out. Anyways, take care. Get out of here. Get this under 30 minutes. Peace out.